morning. Yeah, who stayed up way too late last night? Yep, yep. So, I, I know I've seen lots of yawns this morning. Got to get back into like a full like school schedule out of that summer summer time schedule. Um, we'll have a few announcements for you this morning. Um, first of all, um, you need to be checking your SMA school calendar for day-to-day -day, uh, schedule of events and activities. Okay, so you're not going to get everything here on a Monday morning. So do check that uh, if you don't miss anything. Um, this week, there's a student ambassador meeting at the lecture hall on Tuesday, tomorrow at 8 a.m. There's also a student council Thursday at 8 a.m. Okay, be sure to make those if that pertains to you. And then um, this Friday, um, the um, student recreation organization is doing um, Captain America matinee series. Um, so I think this was a total hit last Friday, so you should join in on this snacks and movie and hanging out with friends. Yeah, you would, yep. And then um, also voting. If you are a U.S. citizen who is 18 years old, you can vote. All right, who, who, where are voters at? You're gonna be voting this year. Come on, let me see it, let me see it, yeah. You're our future, right there, okay? But you must register to vote at least 30 days before the election date, so make sure you have that squared away. All right, um, Ms. Powell has an announcement for you, and then I'll go into Berkeley.
2015 of her life. And so, so God, I just pray you open our hearts and our ears to hear and see you this morning. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear myself. I will tell you why I'm dressed like this in a minute. And I felt really that God was telling me to share my story with you and how it backed up and how God prepared the way for things to come in my life. It's an amazing journey. Please don't ignore God, ever. And uh, speaking of IT, if you don't have your ID, you will meet me today. <laughs> so find those IDs that I, I made for you at registration. Uh, 2013, let's back up a little. Uh, we had a flood in 2015. How many of you were affected by this flood? How many of you were here? Yeah, there's several of you in the room who also went through this flood. But let me, uh, okay. I wanted to tell you about Zacchaeus first. Zacchaeus, if you grew up in the Baptist church, you learned Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. Climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Well, the story is only told in Luke. And Zacchaeus was a tax collector, which meant he wasn't popular at all. He was very rich, not popular, and very short, and he knew that Jesus was coming into Jericho. And on that journey, he wanted to see Jesus. So he climbed up in the tree, which brings me to the tree. God planted that tree years before, so it would be there for Zacchaeus to climb up. And God sent me to a, and Monica and a several others of you to West Texas so that we would be prepared for what was coming in my own life. I hope you believe like this. It it's just takes all the guesswork out of life, you know, to um, West. Let me tell you about West very shortly. This was 2013 in April. There was a fire. They have a fertilizer plant. And there was a fire. So the first responders go in, the fire, the firemen, the um, volunteer firemen went in and they started working on the fire. But while they were there, the sad part is there was an explosion. This was six o'clock on Wednesday evening. And the picture on the left shows you the before picture. You can, you can Google this and, and see all the images. They're just tragic. And then on the right is where the fertilizer plant blew up and burned everything. And um, it's a small town. It was uh, caused by ammonium nitrate fertilizer, uh, not properly handled or stored. Um, it was about 6 o'clock on Wednesday night. The youth were at church that I know of. And uh, oh, just many people injured, many homes destroyed. I should probably look at my notes. Here we go. Um, so many people injured, and there was no hospital there, or very little part of a hospital. It was, uh, they had to farm them out to Waco and other towns around in that area. It's really sad. Right beside the uh, fertilizer plant, was um, an apartment complex, two or three, two-story apartment complex. When we got there in June, July, June, um, it was just, it was like timber. It was just like those you know, pickup sticks that you have just everywhere. So these people lost not only their home, but their lives. And uh, the high school and the middle school were both destroyed. So they have brand new ones now. Uh, Homes were destroyed, over 150. If they have a big red X on them, then that meant you couldn't go into them. They were condemned. The lady across the street from where we were working came over to me and she said, Nancy, I have nothing. She said, all I have is my social security check and I can't, I can't afford to rebuild or replenish my house or I can't move in with family. I don't know what she did. I had to turn her over to one of our ministers who could help her, and hopefully she found a new pathway. Um, this is our group, Monica, my friend Monica and I, 
We did West also. Do you know what West is famous for? Yeah, Pilates. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. Um, so we took a team and we worked in several houses. We worked on their yards. We worked in the house. We gutted their houses down to the studs. We cleaned up glass everywhere and glass was just everywhere because the windows just shattered and blew into the house. So, 2015, two years later, uh, my husband's birthday was May 16th, and we decided that we wanted to take a trip. We needed to get out of town. You know, sometimes life just closes in, and you think, I just need to go sit on a beach somewhere. I just need to do this. So we did. This was our escape. <laughs> it's a little bit pricey, but we took it. So we still do this kind of thing. He lost his job one year. We went to Disney World. You know, you just you just got to get away and think it through, where where you have peace and quiet. So we went on this cruise. We came back into town Saturday. This is a picture of my sister. That was part of the summer experience. She had been clear of breast cancer for 11 years. She came back, came back with a vengeance. I had never even heard of this word metastasized. I didn't even know how to spell it, but it had. And uh, this was her and I at the uh, Cancer Center in Houston, MD Anderson. And uh, we spent a lot of time there that summer. She, um, she and I were really good friends. I have two other sisters and a brother, but Jeanette and I were really good friends because we sat out on the porch in the mornings and we could call each other. She lived in Baytown outside of Houston. We could call each other, and we knew exactly where each other was, on the porch, drinking coffee. So uh, Jeanette, and uh, we stayed at her house on that Saturday night and told her children that we would be glad to give them a night off and we would stay with her. We woke up on Sunday morning. Sunday morning was the flood at 3 a.m. that came through San Marcos. My neighbors were next door. She heard water running. She got out of bed into about a foot of water and thought, well, there's a leak somewhere. She went to the back door and there's a river running through her house. And so they climbed up on the roof and they spent there about three hours in the lightning and the rain. My neighbors across the street were, uh, they were in their house and they couldn't get out. They couldn't open the doors or the windows because of the pressure of the water. So it was a pretty sad situation. The man next to me, next to us, next door, was on oxygen, of course the electricity went out. He didn't live much longer, which is really sad. Um, I told Jeanette Starbucks would cure him, though. <coughs> it didn't, but that was a good, fun time for us. This is where we lived, on the outskirts of town, and about a half mile from the river. We'd never had the river come in the house. It came up to the back porch one time. We didn't have flood insurance. So uh, the loss was ours. The insurance company gave us $500. That didn't do much. Um, on Sunday, May 24th, we woke up. Our phones were ringing, people calling us, all these people that we didn't tell we were going anywhere. They were calling us to see where we were, to see how our neighborhood was. This is a picture of the end of our street, down to camper sales. All of those things were either floating or uh, drenched, of course. There was 10 inches of rain in Blanco. Blanco is about a hour away from here, northwest, and they had 10 inches of rain. Well, that rain came off the hill country into the river came down through Wimberley, and you, you have heard probably of the Wimberley flood, and many people, well, not many people, but several people lost their lives in that one. Their houses just floated down the river. When it got to San Marcos, it was 39 feet. Now, I'm about five feet, a little over, but five 40 feet wave, you know, it's about uh, a little bit over my head, a lot over my head, in fact. A lot. <laughs> so um, we we went on home. We stopped 
and change clothes. So we started a new chapter in our life. This is another picture from the highway of our street. It was all flooded. It, it receded really fast, though, so I was told we weren't there. That's my shirt that I wore today, just for you, <laughs> and my shorts that are five years old. All we had left, basically, all I had left from the cruise was a suitcase full of clothes. Um, everything in the closets were gone. I mean, you couldn't couldn't wash them enough times to get the mud out. There's still mud everywhere. Mud on my Bible. It doesn't come out. It doesn't come out of the metal chairs. It doesn't come out of the water hose. So we still have reminders every day of the flood. <clears throat> we wandered in the wilderness, I say, for 40 days and 40 nights. We wandered all summer. We didn't have a place to live. We were homeless. We went um, I stayed at MD Anderson. A friend loaned us their travel trailer, and we lived in that. But when it got July and August and up to 100 degrees, it was really like an oven in there. So we spent a lot of time at Walmart. Everybody needs to go to Walmart every now and then. But every day. We had no place to store anything. So people offered to give us things, but we had no place to store anything at that time. So let me take you on. Oh, I wanted to show you. The lady up here in the blue shirt was a lady I had met in West. She's over Texas Baptist Disaster Recovery. I had met her in West. And she and I, she came to San Marcos to work for our disaster. My sign, which is right down here, was given to me by Kirsten Ozzie. And it's a quote from The Wizard of Oz. It says, Nobody gets in to see the wizard, not nobody, not know how. I love that quote. It was in my office, and it still has mud on it, but that's okay. And down on the bottom right is a picture of the uh, Medical Explorer Post, uh, 4077. They are a group at Texas State, which uh, are, they're all pre-med students, and it's a Boy Scout unit. So here's the water line. So if I stood by the water line, it came up to my shoulders. And I want to show you some pictures of the house. But um, first, the song, Natalie Grant is a, is a Christian singer, and I love her song, Hell. And I just wanted to share that with you. This is how, what it means to be held, how it feels when the, the sacred is torn from your life and you survive. This is what it is to be loved and to know that the promise was when everything fell, you'd be held. What a, what a scripture in that, what a, what a message. <clears throat> God gave me a lot of songs. I have a lot of songs played in my, in my playlist, right up here. And uh, a lot of experience, a lot of mission work with Monica and the clan, the family. Uh, this is the inside of our garage. There used to be a refrigerator and a freezer right here for the whole is. It kind of gets hard when I have to relive this. I haven't told this story in a long time. For a while there, I would go to the bank. This is a former student. I taught 38 years, but mostly at San Marcos High School. I went to the bank, and... Uh, she asked me how I was doing because she had heard about the flood. I said, we have nothing. We have no, we have no office supplies. I don't have a post-it note. I don't have a pen. So she went to the back of the bank and got me a whole box full of office supplies, which was great. I really appreciated it. Uh, this is our living room. We lost two TVs, five computers, um, two terabytes of hard drives, and Mac folks out here. We get all of my husband's data off his Mac. I'm a PC person. They got nothing. So I lost everything before 2015. I had all my pictures on there and I had backed them up like a good IT person and they were all gone. So this is what happened in our house. Um, the kitchen, the refrigerator was on its back. We had just had the kitchen redone, remodeled. Everything was new. The dishwasher was full of mud. 
the pots and pans were full of mud. You can't use these things as if they've been soaked with river water. So you just recycle them. The bathroom, a layer of mud on everything. See, the mud stays with you, even after the flood. You have the mud. That's not a good picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can think of another one. I used to scrapbook uh, before scrapbooking was scrapbooking. I used to do that. It was fun. I, I had all my kids' pictures in there. I had grandkids' pictures in there. Um, that was all gone. I have nothing. I had a lot of CDs because I love music. I had a lot of um, records finals that uh, I was really proud of in the 60s, music, 70s music, 80s, so on. So uh, all of that was gone. Now let me go back to one slide. The hot tub. We had a hot tub. That was kind of a, a rash purchase one time, and we spent a lot of money on it, which we didn't need to. And uh, But we loved it. And the grandkids thought it was their personal swimming pool. And this is the mud tub. I'll tell you more about the mud tub in just a minute. My mom's chair. God has a sense of humor. I've always believed in that. I hope you do too. Because I believe that God can laugh. I believe in my heart that God knows when I need a laugh. My mother's chair, I hated that chair, y'all. It was uncomfortable. It was old. It was. It didn't go with anything in my house. My new phrase was, it doesn't go with the decor. And it somehow got out in the yard. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> and if you look at the trailer behind it, everything we had from here up went into that trailer. That was all we had. Um, the boots, I have to tell you the boots. Um, boots I had to buy at Walmart and Kyle. My son, daughter-in-law live in Buda. And we stopped there because our Walmart was closed and purchased boots, rubber boots, on the way back. And that's the only way we could have really worked in our house. Uh, the stilts. Oh, boy. Okay, what happened? The stilts. Let me tell you about stilts. My husband's in his 60s. He bought a pair of stilts. He wanted to, to paint the eaves on the house. You don't put a 60-year-old man on stilts, but he didn't know that. But thank goodness God took care of that took those stilts away, and I'm so glad. So, um, can you fix this slide? Yeah. We got past mom's chair, thank goodness. This is how it feels when the, the sacred is torn from your life. I had retired from San Marcos High School, 2010, and the part of that I bought new furniture for the house. It was all gone. You can see, there's our life right there. Um, David, thank you, David. David worked at, tirelessly at our house along with his brothers, mom, dad. Uh, the, the people on the right, former students of mine, they took, people just came in and took our clothes and, and took them home to wash. So we, we kind of knew where all of our clothes were, <laughs> but uh, we had no place to store them. There's Monica. Monica kind of ramrodded the whole show there. She's very grateful for her and our friendship. Mrs. Lee, Hudson, and Austin's mom gave me shoes. I had no shoes, y'all. What I had went on the, the cruise. So I had no shoes, had no underwear, had no jewelry, had nothing, no makeup, nothing, hardly at all. So people were just were just giving us so many things. David Icona started work here recently in the dorm, and he's been my good friend and travel buddy to uh, a, an orphanage in uh, Cunha with our church and Monica. And so he wrote on my wall, carried out the fridge. Uh, coaches, I worked on their computers diligently at the high school. And when they were in a problem, had a problem with a computer, I would come and bail them out. Uh, 
they love me, I love them, and they showed up on Saturday morning and said, what can we do to help? I said, well, we have a top that mud tub out in the back. I need some help taking it down and putting it out in the front yard. So they did. God, these were back to West. You know, God prepared me. These are Texas Baptist dis disaster team men who came in after we had cleaned out our house and sprayed for anything that might still be living in there that we didn't want living. Uh, bacteria, uh, mold, so on. And again in West, on Sunday after the flood, this man showed up, Bill Means. He was the chaplain for uh, the Texas Baptist Men disaster recovery team. He showed up with everything you can think of from West. People just donated money. They donated uh, books. They donated little scripture verses uh, that you hang on the wall. Kolaches, cookies. Oh my gosh. It was such a, a, an amazing thing that people found out that I had helped them and they wanted to help me back. It was just an amazing act of God in my heart. So how do we overcome these? Scriptures. Learn your scriptures now. I'm, I'm of age that I have to wear a mask. <laughs> and you need to learn these things so they will play in your head when you have to have them. Songs. I grew up in, in the Baptist church and three years old I'm singing in the choir and I'm still singing in the choir. And uh, Christian music. Listen to Christian music. And also listen for the small voice of God. Sometimes it's a loud voice. He told us on Tuesday after the flood, my husband and I both, we felt the need to go forward. We felt that we didn't want to deal with contractors and plumbers and um, anything else to having to do with rebuild a house. We felt like God was calling us to his mission, which was missions. And we did. That was when Monica and I raided Guatemala. We had a ball, you know. It was fun. I taught, I taught computer classes in Spanish. That was so fun. I did have an interpreter. But teaching these students uh, in, in Guatemala about Christ and about how he works in our lives, it was a mission. Favorite song and favorite scripture, uh, great is his faithfulness. God is so faithful. You'll just listen if you'll just open your hearts. The song is also there playing in my head, uh, Lamentation. 3, 22, and 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They're, they are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Uh, my friend Jan Coger gave me this. It said, it's so true. She looked back and she marveled at what God had done, at what had come. She didn't wonder how she made it. She already knew the answer. Only with God's help had she powered through, for without his strength she could do nothing. That is so true. So here I'm at, here to ask you today, how will you overcome? Have you lost something? Have you lost a friend? Uh, I've lost a friend recently. I've lost my sister. That was very, very touching. Even I had lost my parents, but not as much as the closest of my sister and I. That was hard. Uh, disappointment. You've been disappointed, I know. You failed a class, you failed a test, you failed this, and you thought you were ready. Disappointment. Uh, I'm about out of time, so I just want you to share, I just want to share with you that um, Psalm 121, we put part of this on my dad's headstone, gravestone. I will lift up my eyes into the hills. From when, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He watches over you and will not slumber. And down in verse 8, the Lord will watch over your coming and going now and forevermore. So I ask you again, and I'm leaving this open-ended for Monica, and how will you overcome what is bothering you? Is it loss? Is it addiction? Is it uh, just bullying? Is it the way you're treated? How do you overcome those things?
wipes everything that we have known out. And so, but um, God is um, is there. He is present, and uh, and we are resilient. And um, and so He calls us to new things every day, uh, not to those things that we possess. And so, um, so I hope you can uh, learn something from this morning and and continue to think about how can you overcome. Um, and from a lot of our personal experience here, it's through the help that comes from the Lord. So, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, faculty and seniors, you're dismissed.